Since the beginning of time, the Nanaimo River has tumbled out of the Vancouver Island mountains and wound its way through the foothills and the coastal woodlands to this superb natural harbor. These ancient rock carvings found near the harbor's shores attest to the fact that the harbor has been the home of the Nanaimo Aboriginal people for thousands of years. They learned to live with the rhythm of the harbor seasons, and they wanted for nothing. The waters of their harbor home not only provided all the fish, the shellfish, and the marine animals they needed to survive, but its shorelines and nearby forests abundantly provided other necessities. It was also a time of feasting and potlatches, festivities that would often go on for weeks with guests invited from other coast Salish bands. And so the pattern of their lives continued, just as it always had. Then, one day it all changed, when tall ships entered their harbor and dropped anchor. By 1876, the town had been dramatically transformed from the isolated little hamlet of 1853. The harbor had changed too. Now, ships from all over the world came to load up with Nanaimo coal. Within 10 years of white settlement, the number of First Nations people living around the harbor declined dramatically, largely from European diseases. Others left their ancient harbor home because as the white community grew, the land and the sea base they depended on to survive began to shrink. New industries were taking over their ancient fishing and ceremonial sites. With the war, the harbor's industry was slowly revitalized. And there was a post-war building boom. A new city hall was built, and a new arena. And here's the groundbreaking ceremony for the new high school. The old sports grounds on the harbor became a huge shopping mall. Further north, a new bridge was built to span the millstone. Unfortunately, this new building activity had a downside. Many of the city's old heritage buildings were destroyed. This is the moment of destruction of the city's magnificent old stone Victorian post office. The destruction of the old post office represents the thinking probably of the time. It was the new and the modern is what we will expect in the future without an appreciation of what came before us. Over the next two decades, that changed as people became increasingly concerned with the kind of development that was taking place around their harbor. The pro-development mayor and city council of the time seemed unaware of these concerns. They were genuinely surprised at the howl of protest they received when they announced that they were about to allow a huge private marina to be built on the last piece of public access to the downtown waterfront. A battle raged back and forth in the press, and it became an issue in the local elections to city council a young boy in the 30s, there was a whole series of um, coal wharves. For approximately 10 years, very few ships came into uh, the assembly dock. That was our private swimming hole. And um, I often felt that some part of the waterfront should be retained for my children, my grandchildren, and their children's children. The citizens who proposed stopping the marina development and turning the area into a waterfront park ran their own candidate, and he topped the polls. The results of a plebiscite held at the time was clear. The marina development was squashed, and the city acquired the land for a park. But it wasn't over. A huge storm was about to break. The Harbor Commission of the day, again with the backing of business leaders and city council, proposed major industrial development of the federally administered Inner Harbor and the Nanaimo River estuary. 
Hope to create about 165 acres here, of which about 50% will be used for industrial use, and the other 50% will go into a forest products terminal, a major forest products terminal here. I think that uh, with the mills created, with the uh, forest products cargoes that we can envisage being shipped out through the port of Nanaimo, we could be the largest forest products port in Canada. What was being proposed was the filling in of 146 acres of the harbor and estuary for sawmills and marshalling yards, much of it in the center of the city. Opposition groups demanded everything be stopped until there was more public input. The $10 million project has provided a classic battleground for the environmentalists. Their main argument is that the development would endanger the salmon potential of the Nanaimo River estuary. Further, they say the Nanaimo Harbor Commission is acting without benefit of either social or environmental impact studies. A task force was sent out from Ottawa and held public hearings. The lower depth to the harbor. Officials now have a wealth of public opinion to deal with. As the chairman said, the issue is emotionally charged. Now is the time, obviously, for some cold, hard thinking. Terry Dolan, CBC News, Nanaimo. After careful deliberation, they sided with the protesters. The industrialization of the Inner Harbor and the Nanaimo River estuary were permanently shelved. The task force then created a precedent when they changed the makeup of the Harbor Commission by increasing the number of commissioners from three to five. Three representing the federal government, one representing the city, and another the regional district. This way, local concerns like those voiced by the protesters could be addressed in any future plans for harbor development. New industrial development moves south to Duke Point near the Harmac Mill, leaving the harbor free to develop in a completely different manner. And this is the result. A delightful living and recreational area. I think Nanaimo demonstrates, probably better than any other small port that I know, that you can in fact have that balance of heavy industry, commercial, tourism, um, places for the community to enjoy, the access, the recreational areas, swimming within a, a harbor. Our waters are almost pristine because we are taking the time and the, making the effort to protect that which is there. But these wonderful amenities would not exist without a profitable, well-managed harbor. As the harbor continues to flourish in new and successful ways, there's something else happening. People are returning to the harbor to work and to live. It has once again become the focal point for the city's activities and events. So much history, so much gone by, but some things never change. The Nanaimo River still tumbles out of the Vancouver Island Mountains into the harbor. And just like the river, the story of the harbor will continue to unfold, just as it always has.